Hi, my name is Grace at World Sensing. I'm here to introduce you to our lower tree network technology. Find out what it is and why this is the best option for your underground projects. Let's start. As you know, our IoT remote monitoring solution is used around the globe to help monitor infrastructures and mitigate risks. Our customers value the LoRaStar network technology for its long range and reliability. Overall, customers say they choose world sensing over others based on the fact that the solution is high quality and low maintenance. Today, we will talk about LoRa Tree. This network topology can extend the radio communication range of your existing LoRa network, especially when you encounter radio signal obstacles. The key component of this network topology is the K20 edge repeater. The repeater is able to receive a signal from a node and retransmit it to the gateway. It is what we all call data hop. You can install repeaters strategically to overcome radio signal obstacles such as walls, ramps, and curves. This way, you can transmit data up to 10 kilometers underground. The LoRa Tree network is robust enough to acquire and send data of hundreds of devices under a single network, depending on the sampling rate. Compared to other network topologies, LoRa Tree offers the longest radio range in underground environments. By using two repeaters, for example, you can achieve up to 10 kilometers of coverage. This reduces network density significantly and enables you to cover wide areas underground through one single network. The K20 Edge Repeater is the key component of the LoRa Tree network. The repeater is a robust IP67 certified device. It shares core features with the world sensing 4G rugged gateway edge, such as an external antenna and minimum power requirements. The repeater comes with a dedicated interface from where you can configure the associated nodes and their location within the network. To configure a repeater within a network, you need to set these two parameters. One, the node ID that you can find in the product documentation. Two, the repeater ID, which is an arbitrary integer that will define the position of the repeater within a branch. In order to properly define a branch, repeaters must have an ascending number ID as they are placed downstream. The LoRa Tree network follows a downstream configuration logic in which devices are organized in two categories. The first category is local devices, which are all nodes, data loggers, and sensors directly connected to the repeater. The second category is downstream devices, which is for all other downstream repeaters and nodes connected to this branch. When you configure the network, make sure to register all devices under their respective category. Let's look at an example. Let's say you want to connect four digital loggers to capture data of linear instruments at the end of a downhill underground ramp in an underground mine. To send the data to the main information systems, you have to overcome the inclination differences between the individual devices. And you need to factor in a turn of the gallery and a wall. You first perform a link check test with the World Sensing app to assess the connectivity range along your desired path. This will allow you to identify the points where the radio signal weakens and guide you to the best location for the repeaters. With these tests, you decide to place a repeater at the entrance of the gallery to overcome the turn and another one at the entrance of the ramp to resolve the inclination differences. The two repeaters extend the radio signal from the digital loggers, allowing the data to hop to the gateway, which is located at the entrance of the ramp, and continue traveling to the main information systems. Let's look at the logic when configuring the LoRa Tree network. We give the first repeater an arbitrary ID value of 10 and the second one an ID value of 20. At gateway level, all branch elements are called downstream devices. For repeater 10, all devices fall under downstream devices. Under repeater 20, the data loggers are defined as local devices. Now, let's configure this network in CMT Edge. First, access CMT Edge through the main gateway. Click on Repeater Plugin that is available in CMT Edge version 2.7.1 onwards. Now, list the device IDs of all data loggers and repeaters for this corresponding branch in the field downstream devices. When you're done, click Save Configuration. The second step is to configure repeater 10. To do so, Connect your computer to the repeater using a USB Ethernet adapter and an Ethernet cable. Then, 
access the CMT Edge repeater configuration locally via web browser. Click on Repeater Configuration in the main menu. First, introduce the repeater ID we set earlier to 10. Then, register repeater 20 and the data logger node IDs as downstream devices. Since we do not have any data logger directly associated with repeater 10, we leave the field local devices blank. Once finished, click on Save Configuration. The next step is to associate the repeater to the gateway network. To do so, click on the Low Power Radio Configuration tab on the main menu. Type the network ID found in the Gateway Information Sheet and save changes. The third step is to access the CMT Edge Repeater Configuration interface locally through Repeater 20. As we did for Repeater 10, introduce the repeater ID for Repeater 20. Then, configure the downstream devices by registering all the data loggers as local devices. Once finished, click on Save Configuration. You may want to repeat step 1 to 3 with other branches in the network. We suggest starting the configuration from the gateway downstream. The network is now properly configured. To check the proper functioning of your setup, you can do the following. Check that all the nodes in your network are displayed on the nodes list in the CMT Edge network page. Nodes that are successfully connected will feature a green OK label. If this label doesn't appear, check the repeater configuration or perform a link check test from the World Sensing app again to assess radio signal strength. You now know how to configure the LoRa Tree network. Do you have a project in mind that would be a good fit for this technology? Let us know. We are here to help you with the design and implementation of your next project. Let's talk soon.